Welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, I'm Jill. I'm Sarah. We're Simplify Homeschool. And we're Simplify Homeschool. Yep. And we run this group. And um, I just want to put it out there that usually I'm in England and I am in England. And so my internet's usually kind of bad. But this time you are also where? You're in Greece, right? In the middle of nowhere, kind of. A little bit in the middle of nowhere. The time that the internet was prime in in um in Athens it was actually really good like it was it was like at home it was great yeah as soon as I left Athens um not so much yeah so but, and I've already frozen twice since being on the call with you oh no I think that was me I think it was my it was so bad well no one was me because it said really big on top you're unstable so I know one was at least me <laughs> so. so I think that one of the takeaways here is, um, you said people need to know this yeah. stuff, Farah. You were like, people need to know <laughs> because we're talking about international admissions. So elaborate on yeah. your your UK experience with no, the internet, Jill. You know, I'm in I'm in the UK, and in some places it's really good. There's really good internet. For instance, Scotland. When you and I were up there, oh yeah, it right. was great. Yeah, yeah. Par parts of London, pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, York, I found York to be that was okay. Yeah. <laughs> and up on my other parts, yeah, that's true. But other parts aren't great. I'm in East Sussex. Um, I'm literally, I'm in the very typical English village, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It's idyllic. Like when I send people pictures, they're like, <laughs> that's her house? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's like a condo in an old building. Like I have to like explain. <laughs> but it's beautiful. But it's in the middle of nowhere, and the internet is challenging. Whether you have a phone and you have 4G, or you have you know the internet, or you have, as I do, um, Elon Musk Wi-Fi, it's just not working. None of it is working. So um, that's one of the challenges. Things are different because I think a lot of people, especially you know maybe right now, think, oh, I want to go somewhere else, you know, have a different experience and it's going to be amazing, but there's challenges in every country you go to. So yeah, not that that's a bad thing, you know, that's great for, for young adults to figure out and work their way mm -hmm. through, but you know, yeah, just to be aware, I think is good. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, well, but you have more experience with this. Look, and, and we have started to have more homeschoolers uh, interested in applying and looking abroad. Yeah. And so we thought this was a good topic. Um, and it always, I think there's always a lot of questions about it um, because there are additional hurdles. So, uh, yeah, I mean, how do you, how, I would say, yeah. I wouldn't say it's additional hurdles necessarily. It's like different hurdles, you know? Yes, than I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you have to plan. And I think I think that's the big takeaway. Yeah, and I think a really big takeaway is American colleges and universities are much more holistic and look at a, a, the whole picture in a way that a lot of international universities do not. The idea is almost foreign, and um, and to have that in your mind, like if your ultimate goal is American universities then you want to keep, you know, doing what you're doing and remember that activity list is important and the essays are important and the teacher, the letters of rec are going to be important and the coursework's important. And it's a very much a holistic look at the student. And then you wanted, the student wants to do maybe UK schools or something, then you can add a few things, but I wouldn't take away from the main goal of holistic admissions for American if you want that, you know, as the main goal. Flip it otherwise, you know, if your main goal is like international universities, then really hone in on what they want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, one of the things we were talking about uh, before we got on the call was like, you know, it, it, having an accredited diploma uh, transcript in the U.S., it's rarely very useful. Like it's just, you yeah. know, occasionally, but for the most part. Uh, you don't you don't need to to do that. But for schools abroad, sometimes it opens doors. It depends. Sometimes it's not yeah. necessary, but um, sometimes it opens doors and there can be reasons to do that if that's your primary goal. But you have to keep in mind. I mean, this is this is like what you're saying, Jill, about like, OK, if if, if you want to keep open American schools, you have to keep thinking about being holistic and right. it's the it's the here too like okay you have to think about 
because if you if you want to look to schools abroad and they're all different like it's the goal the things that you need to do are different um for each of those we're totally like breaking up aren't we is it so bad like I just see your face like looking at all this no it's okay I decided to blur my background because I was like wait I should do that and so I blurred it and then it got a little funky, but it's all good. I just okay, okay. keep going. Um, You're saying really wonderful things. <laughs> um, I just think like you have to, no matter which path that you go down, you're, you're sacrificing something, you know? Yeah, so like, yeah. you have to think about yeah. that. Like, do I want to sacrifice? Um, you know, it's sort of two things. Like if you do that, like, do I want to sacrifice the freedom that I have as a homeschooler to sort of mold and make my own goals and choose the best coursework for my kid? Um, and, you know, and also prepare for the holistic style of admissions in the U S versus like, are we just all in for going abroad? And if we are, should we choose like an outside, like, you know, a charter school, um, or like an online school? Um, and if so, like, what should we look at? And how much of that freedom are we sacrificing in order to fulfill that goal of going abroad? So I think, you know, that that's the, that's a big question, I think, that, that families need to ask themselves. Um, again, not just about admissions, but also about educational goals and the, the type of experience yeah. they want their student to have. Yeah, definitely. I think also it's important to, and we tell families that we work with this, um, who are applying to American universities, you know, to check out prices everywhere and do net price calculator. Mm -hmm. I think if your student is saying they're interested in going international, and you know this pretty early on, I would check prices everywhere. And does it include Mm -hmm. housing? You know, what's the international cost? Does it include housing? Is there ever any sort of aid? Is there ever any sort of scholarships? A lot of times the answer is no, um, but not always. Um, and, and does it make sense to actually apply to universities internationally, or does it make more sense to instead apply to an American school and then really utilize study abroad, which my son did. And he's, so his first year he went to, uh, he was studying Russian. He went to Bishkek for about a semester and his second year, he went all over the world through this wonderful program that I just, that absolutely changed his view and his life. Um, and he got to see the whole, you know, so many places, Jordan, Nepal, Chile, the uh, New York, you know, and it was just life changing. And this summer he may be going over to China because he's now doing Chinese. So, I mean, there is ways to get international experience by without applying to an international university, if it makes sense mm-hmm. to do it that way. Yeah. And, and I think also, I think it's important to know too, like, because you're talking about the cost, like for low income families, sometimes that's the best way. Um, yeah. Because if, you know, at a, at a really good school that meets need, a lot of the time your need will, that, that need based aid will follow your student abroad. And I mean, right. again, not everywhere you need to chat. I mean, like there's yeah. different everywhere, but um, that can open up possibilities for them to have even, you know, if they play it right, multiple experiences. Abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what my son did, right? Mm-hmm. He was at a school that did provide full need and that need followed him in all these programs. So it was, it's been amazing for him. We definitely could not have afford school abroad otherwise. And there are some schools that, that have programs where you start abroad, um, where yeah. you do a, like yeah. a year or a semester abroad. Um, and sometimes that could be a way in to that school. Like they, it's a, it's like a small program, um, and then, you know, there are some schools that have like another campus abroad and a relationship yeah. with that campus where, you know, that, you know, you're, you can go and do something at that campus, you know, um, right. yeah. so, you know, that can be part of the choice for, for us schools. Okay. Um, so, someone yes, asked, can we talk more about financing these study abroad programs? Yeah. A lot of that's through the university, as we were saying. Mm-hmm. It is just um, generally through the university. I would say ask. That's a question to ask when you're touring schools. I mean, ask, figure out, like, because everywhere has study abroad. And so everywhere touts it as if it's like, we have this special thing called study abroad. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but it's, uh, you know, the thing to ask is like, well, what percentage of students are actually studying abroad? What percentage of the students are actually like 
for how long? And then what is the funding available for that? And, you know, how, what does that look like? Um, yeah. That, that's, that's really the questions you need to ask. It's different everywhere. Yeah. It is different everywhere. Okay. We have a lot of questions <laughs> and I have to find them. Okay. Um, do we want to go to questions or do you want to talk about anything else first? Um, you know, I do want to mention maybe the, um, you know, cause I talked about getting an accredited diploma, like as a, yeah. as a thing that you might need to do. Um, I, I guess I want to mention, um, that NARS and Clon Laura are probably the two that are, that let you keep your most homeschool style, um, of education, um, where you, you know, there's still a bunch of hoops to jump through for, for NARS. Yeah. Uh, that's, they're particularly like, you know, a lot of, a lot of paperwork. Um, but it, those, those two are two where you can really still do a homeschool. Like you can still use co-op classes. You can still use. You'll have more freedom with those two. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, there's, because nowadays there's so many online schools. So I would just yeah. sort of, yeah, just think about it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, also, you know, we've been working with some students in California and some of those charter schools seem to be a little bit more flexible lately than before. So sometimes those mm -hmm. are good options if you're, you know, but it depends yeah. on the school. Absolutely. It depends <laughs> on the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, it's not that, I mean, not just California. I mean, different yeah, I, you know the way that charters and home homeschool charters work in different states is just constantly evolving. So I, you know, it just look look at look at what yours is doing. Is it providing the education you want? Yeah. Um, someone asked real quick, Farah, what was the name of Decca's program that he did? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna look this up. So hold on one second. I'm going to find this. It, okay, here I found it. SIT study abroad. Here, I'll put it in. The, I'm going to put this in the questions real quick for whoever asked that. It was so good. It they they kept saying it's going to be life changing, and I'm like, wait, what? But then it actually was. And he, he came made, back like with a new major and a new direction. He decided to transfer. <laughs> like it was cool. yeah, the it was best good. friends of his life. He's going to Boston um, in the first week of December to meet up with a bunch of them, you know, and it, one particular person really became best friends. They made t-shirts with, with, with each oh, other's yeah, pictures each on other. them and they're wearing them. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, and in the beginning he was so nervous. I mean, my son gets nervous. I mean, like, I don't, but he just, I mean, it's amazing what they did with the kids on that. It was just so good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're getting lots of questions. So here's our first question. You ready? Yeah. My son's dream and a big reach are schools in England. IB education appears to be the best path to being as competitive as possible. Does an online IB education hold the same value as going to a physical school? And the IB, uh, online IB is so new. Like they literally just graduated their first class. I don't think anybody knows. Um, it's a pilot program. They might even, I mean, I think it's probably going to continue. There's just a few schools that are doing it. Um, the two that we're a little bit more familiar with are Kings Inter High and Dwight Global. Um, but there's a couple others that I think you would recognize as being pretty homeschool friendly. Both have significant face-to-face -face components um, on Zoom. Um, I think all the programs do, as far as I can tell. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I don't know, but I would question whether or not IB is really the best path or not. Yeah, um, that's what I was gonna say. That was gonna be my first thing. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think, Jill, about that? I mean, I think APs are probably, for homeschoolers, the better way to go. Um, there is, you know, like you said, there's the IB online programs. And they're really, look, you know, if they are truly IB programs, that means they've been, you know, certified and everything. So universities in the UK will take that at value. But I think there is some bias in this country, in the here, a little bit. 
against online programs versus an in-person school. And it, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you the numbers or anything. That's just a general impression. You know, if it came down to a few applicants and one was in person, I don't know. APs, I think, are seen differently for, and if that's an option, I think. The thing you have to remember is it's so much based on just these scores. I mean, that's really what UK schools are looking at. Do you have them or not? If you do, then you've, you 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 are being considered, you know? Definitely not a shoe in for anyone at some of these schools. I mean, there's a reason that, I mean, some of this is just down to tradition at this point, but I mean, UK homeschoolers often use APs, APs. instead of, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's there's several providers that are kind of focused on that. Um, yeah. And that market, I think that that makes, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Like, they're easier to access. They're easier to study for. Yeah. They're more straightforward. Um, you can have more of the scores ahead of time. Like, you know, with IB, you're looking at those predicted scores for that second year. Um, and if you don't get them, like, it can all fall apart. <laughs> like, I mean, it yeah. just, you know, it's, whereas with APs, you can have some of them already done. I mean, it, so, you know, um, you could even take some of them ahead of time, you know, just to see. Um, so I think there's just a, you know, I think it's, I think it's just a better path because um, it's just more, it's more tried and true at this point than the online IB programs. Especially for homeschoolers. Yes. For homeschoolers, for homeschoolers. Yeah. 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 Especially. So, okay. And you know, everyone knows, but you just go to the, their sites and you look up the qualifications and what's needed for the specific degree and everything. The one thing about UK schools is they give a lot of great information. I mean, it's pretty easy to find what you need to find. You know, the one thing I would add about that though, is some students are looking for like a big online experience, like, you know, especially for, yeah. for families who live really remotely or who want cameras I mean, on and teachers and, and want, yeah, want that yeah. kind of interaction. And, you know, so if, if that's an added bonus, then some of those, some of those online schools, you know, I mean, like we think about like Stanford online as being like the gold standard, but like there's a growing number of schools of online schools that are providing that you know, that level of rigor, but maybe not that exact yeah. style. Um, and some of them are these online IB programs because IB is intensive. It's it's teacher intensive. It, it just has to be. It's how the program is structured. And so, you know, if your student wants that and you want that for your student, that's a different thing than just sort of being like, this is the path for admissions. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, I'm like, we're getting lots of questions here, plus our other questions. What if your state doesn't do charters for homeschools? That's fine. There's other, we were just talking about if your state did have charters as an option. If, yeah, if it's an option. I mean, I, and even if your state does, you might still. It's not the better. right choice for everybody. No, yeah. you you might still choose to do like an online or a distance program. Um Again, I mean, it just, it depends. But if it is like a number one goal to be abroad, especially if you're in the early stages, you don't know exactly where, but that is the number one goal, then sometimes it is easier to to choose an online, especially because now there are so many options. Like, you yeah. know, it's not like 10, 15 years ago when you, you didn't have that many options. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to go to our questions ahead of time, and then I'm going to go back to the questions people are posting just so we can get through all these, okay? Um, I would love to know more about university options in Canada. My 14-year-old was just asking how Canadian universities are looked upon, valued. Luckily, they they have Canadian citizen, citizenship if needed. And I thought we had another person asking about Canadian. Uh, average cost for college in different countries. I have a kid that wants to leave the country for Canada. So cost for schools in Canada, how are Canadian schools looked upon? We help a lot of homeschoolers with Canadian schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're they're very successful getting into them. Yeah. They're not. I mean, you do need you do need some scores. Like you need SAT scores for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not, I find them to be more open to homeschoolers. Yeah. Like they get it a little better. Mm -hmm. um, 
they also um Canadian schools are bigger typically, not all of them, but a lot of them are a lot larger um uh than American schools on average. Um the cost for Canadian students is a lot lower. So if you do have Canadian citizenship, then yeah, you know, it is it is, you know, it is a, an affordable cost for most families. Um internationally, you're not necessarily saving a lot of money. So it depends. I would say it depends, but for the yeah. most part, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but the your your son was that their son was asking about if they're respected. I mean, Canadian universities are expect respected around the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I wouldn't worry about that at all. Yeah. I mean, you can you can look up the rankings for them, but like it's you know, for, for different ones. But I mean, again, they're not there's there's they're bigger and then they have you know each program is it, it they have different specialties just like you know american schools do but like you're gonna see yeah. that they're really they're very respected around the world i mean you're not yeah you know. yeah yeah and i i think canadian um high schools put a little bit i mean universities do look a little bit more at the whole high school experience as compared yeah, to like a UK, uk school yeah, yeah. So that's a little bit different. Um, great options up in Canada, though. I think it yeah. should be on mm -hmm. lots of students' lists, a lot of those schools. But, but also keep in mind, they have caps on um, mm -hmm. on foreign students. And so I think it's, some of those got added a couple of years ago. So I think we're going to see the impact of that kind of coming down the pipeline, yeah. uh, especially as there's more interest, maybe, um, I think for a variety of reasons. And so... Um, just sort of keep that in mind, I guess. Um, okay, next next question. If we don't get to all the questions, we will also uh, try to answer them afterwards. So just because it's taking, we have a lot this time. Um, I know that associate's degrees aren't generally encouraged, but we also talk a lot about keeping doors open. Seems like planning to get an associate's in high school would be a way to keep international university, university options op open. What do you think? Yeah, um, absolutely, 100%. That can keep doors open. It depends if you want that for your student. It depends if you live in a state where general enrollment's free, you know, and it's cost-effective for some families. Um, my nephew got, my nephew was, uh, living in Switzerland with their parents, came to the U S to get an associate's degree in Virginia and just started, uh, a program in Austria, a business program with the associate's degree, uh, being the way that he got in. So yeah, absolutely. Especially for schools in Europe. In Europe. Yeah. I was going to say in the mm -hmm. UK, it's not typically, no. Yeah. But in Europe, it is a way to keep, you know, to get into those universities and it does keep doors open. And if your student really thrives with dual enrollment, that's an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then you don't have to worry about as so much about um, an accredited high school diploma. You can yeah. focus on that. You can use dual enrollment to get it. Some students are yeah. using dual enrollment so much anyway that they naturally end up qualifying for an associate's degree. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's a good option if that's really a mm -hmm. goal European for the European schools. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if there's any pathway to EU UK universities for US homeschooled kids that don't have four to five AP exams and standardized tests. Any workarounds, transferring, anything like that. So, and um, one of the things they mention is foundation years. Foundation years are a really good option for yeah. universities here in the UK. I highly yeah. recommend them. If you don't know what a foundation year is, look it up. A lot of the universities offer it. It's a good way to start your education here. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, do you think there's any work? Workarounds for UK An associates degree in in Europe. Yeah, but not for in the UK, the, but in Europe. Not in the UK. Yeah, but yeah, for a lot of the schools in Europe. I mean, again, every yeah. school in every country, like they're going to be all different, and so you really have to research the individual schools that you're looking at. Um, but but often, often a, an associate's degree is is a workaround for yeah. that. Yeah. 
Um, the foundation years are really good for homeschool students because it's, it was set up for like non-traditional backgrounds, you know, which in a way homeschoolers are to UK schools and, and, and a lot of, it's much easier to get into them and it just helps you. Yeah. I just think that's a really good option that a lot of families don't know about. So I just mm -hmm. want to say that. Um, okay. Our next question was similar, I, I think. Um, Something I worry, wonder about, what about kiddos who just aren't high achieving due to neurodivergence or other factors? I see a lot of people talking about high levels of AP, dual enrollment, honors, et cetera, on the transcript. If your kiddo can't do that, are you just out of luck? I mean, not for US schools <laughs> because they're holistic. I mean, this is one of the you know, I mean, here I mean, we're touting like European and, you know, we're, we're touting all these international options because many yeah. of them are really great. Um, right. But, you know, this is a place that American universities shine also with like uh, support for neurodiverse students is, is often much yeah. better in the U.S. It's much better. I mean, I don't want to say, you know, it depends on the university. It depends what you're comparing. But Overall, it is much better in the U.S. So your option there is study abroad. You know, that might work yeah. out, you know, if you have a neurodivergent student. Um, yeah, I think it's a great option. Yeah, that's I mean, I think that would be that would probably be the recommend the, my recommendation too. Yeah. 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 You know, my my son. Um, it has some learning disabilities and stuff. And he felt very supported even on his study abroad program. They understood, you know, what, what accommodations he needed and he, he did great on both of them. So again, I just think it's a great option. Okay. Um, also, is this a case where a state homeschooling program? Okay. So I think this is the other the same parent. Also, is this a case where a state homeschool program might actually be helpful if a homeschooler is in a program that counts them officially as a public school student and sends their transcript? Will they look like any public school student to a foreign university and have fewer hoops to jump through? The fewer hoops is sort of a, so <laughs> sometimes yes, but it doesn't necessarily, like if that university also like require, like you know, we're talking about these UK universities and a lot of mm -hmm. them require these AP scores also from American homes, from American public school students. So it's not like it's an additional who, um, yeah. but it can clear other questions away. And especially for some schools in Europe, it can be, it can make it easier. So it, yeah. Uh, but yes, it, it can it can clear some hoops for in some cases, but it's not necessarily doing away with with the need for standardized testing, which may be additionally yeah. required. Yeah. 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 So keep that in mind. Again, look at what all the requirements are very early in the process. That's, that's the biggest takeaway, I think. Yeah. Like like at the very before ninth, ideally in eighth grade, if not in eighth grade, that by by the beginning of ninth grade, like you need to be thinking about these things. Now, there's still going to be pathways like this foundation year option is one potential pathway. And for some students, like they weren't thinking about it, but then they have racked up all these AP scores. They're already mm -hmm. taking junior year, a bunch of APs, and then they're yeah. continuing that senior year. They probably, they know they can do well in the tests. Like, so then they didn't need to do any additional planning, but like if they had not, if, if it had not serendipitously worked that way, then it could have, you know. It could have been a problem. Yeah, it could have been a problem. Okay, average average cost range for colleges in different countries with English speaking programs. I have a kid that wants to leave the country, but I don't know if we could possibly afford it. We'd likely be eligible for a lot of financial aid in many U.S. schools, but grandparents do have some funds saved for them. Before I dive into looking at this, I'd like to know if any countries are worth looking at. Um, so I. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I would just say probably not. <laughs> like if you're eligible for a lot of financial aid, you're probably not going to beat those costs. I was looking up some prices and just getting averages. So like for international students in Canada, it's usually around $40,000 average. 
UK, 20, you know, 45,000. Australia goes up to 40, 20 to 40,000. Some of the European schools are cheaper, but you have to do housing. A lot There's of the no housing, food housing. Right? Yeah. And I just want to say that if anyone doesn't know, like when you think of a university, if you're thinking about it, that in Europe, it's very, very different. It's a whole different experience. You're not getting this American university culture type of thing where everyone's living together. And it's just not like that. It is not like that at many of those schools. No. And it, it typically like students are, you know, it is much more. Yeah, it's just different. Like, you know, students have to find their yeah. own housing. Um, and sometimes it's really expensive. Sometimes um, sometimes it's difficult. Like, not always. Like, you, you just have to research. Mm -hmm. um, so, so sometimes, like, oh, it looks, you know, less expensive at first. You're like, oh, only, you know, seven dollars $8,000 or something. But then you're like, oh, but I'm also, you know, supporting my student, you know, this other household, basically abroad and plus you've got yeah. travel expenses and um it adds up yeah and and yeah you know before you know it you're like oh this came to you know twenty five thousand dollars we could have paid that you know with merit aid at you know less than that at our at our state schools easily so yeah. it, you know it's you're not you're usually not saving a lot of money it depends on, but it always depends on what you're comparing you know for yeah for families that are looking at private universities and, you know, and, and, and our full pay, it can be cheap. So again, it just depends on what your, your comparison points are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone asked about if you can get financial aid in, at UK schools, you can, you can still fill out the FOSFA for schools in the UK mm -hmm. and you can get um, loans in that, but that doesn't always mean it's going to be affordable. Yeah. It, it, sometimes if you're just a family that is lower income, and I say this as someone who <laughs> raised three kids on my own and when they were all, we were, they were considered low income, that it just wasn't an option for my family, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is sometimes. Mm -hmm but you can still create some of these experiences within the system you have to work in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, interested in learning about Oxbridge requirements, specifically related to AP requirements for those who have taken AP exams with fives in middle school, would they still be accepted? So we were talking about this because we were a hundred percent. Shoot. No, I just right. lost you. There you are. <laughs> Sorry, I just have so many on the internet things. or the tabs. Like, what's happening? No, the tab. I lost the tab. You're good. You're here. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I've been like nervous about the internet all day because I got to teach after this. I, now, you, now you see how I am like all the time. Like, I do my classes at Moth, and I have there's three of me. I have my four my four G, my one internet, and my second. So there's everyone's always like, "Why are there three of me?" I'm like, "Because it's not going to go. I'm going to be okay." Okay. Anyway, Oxbridge APs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we were, we were talking about this. It's our understanding that sometimes you need them from the last two years, not even just not from middle school, but, and, and they're definitely weighing those heavier because they, they want, they want those grades. They look at the last two the years yeah, and that's what matters the most. So I, I couldn't find anything specific that said, no, we don't take APs from earlier in that. But the, the language that we found was that the last two years are the most important years. Keep that in mind. You can always reach out and ask too. May I, as I understand it, it's a, it's a reason we haven't had this come up with a client, but like, I, it's my, like, I think we would, we would tell them to delay taking some of those, the key exams because you want them very recently. Yeah. Um, I was looking up some that the USA has some of the worst performing is one of the worst performing countries as far as acceptances go into Oxbridge. Yeah, I knew that. Over the last mm -hmm. several years. So, yeah. So just, just to be aware, <laughs> if, it's hard to get into either one of those schools. You can only apply to one. Um, I was just at Cambridge the other week and I absolutely fell in love. And just to let you know, you can stay on campus. You know, I was at Jesus College in the old 
dorms and the rooms are so cute and then you go have breakfast on camp i mean it's just all these pictures it was it was adorable (laughs) i absolutely loved it um want to go back there as soon as possible i'm going up to you've been seeing all these uk schools so you've got yeah 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 Mm -hmm. i have favorites i have favorites wait wait what's your favorite I mean, Cambridge is absolutely a favorite. I love Bath, the University of Bath. But a lot of students mm-hmm. won't consider that one. Um, I love York. Was okay. It definitely feels like a more traditional campus. Yeah, and you're in the city. You're near the city of York. I mean, <laughs> we love York. Let's just be sure. honest. Yeah. Like one of our favorite places. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, also, I'm in the UK until the first week of December. If anyone wants to get together, I should offer that because we always get together with families in the US. So if anyone, you know, happens to be somewhere I'm going to be, I would love to get together for um, for tea. For tea. For tea. Which actually is your thing anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I only drink tea, so that's that's all yeah. good. Um, I've okay, got my tea right here. I need tea, but it's too late in the day. So, I'm, okay. Also interested interested in where we might find more about international schools outside of Europe. Are there English speaking colleges in South America, Asia, Africa? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes um, they're. Uh, they're tied to American schools, um, mm-hmm. you know, like a, like a Temple has Temple in Japan, for example. Like you know, they mm-hmm. so sometimes they're tied to um, U.S. schools, but sometimes they're not. They're you know they're just American universities in these different countries, um, uh, and you can apply directly. They often uh, serve a lot of international students, like studying abroad. So they serve a lot of American mm-hmm. and European students who come there to study abroad, often they have very limited yeah. degrees. So it, it just keep that in mind. Like they'll have yeah. literally just a dozen majors or something in a lot of places. And they're specialized. You know, there's some that are much more, you know, for business or computing or engineering or sciences yeah. or performing arts or something. Yeah. My my son, when he did study abroad in Beshkek, was at um, oh, the... American University of Central Asia, which, which I have to tell you, he absolutely fell in love with this little campus. And he's like, I'm applying to transfer here. I'm applying to transfer here. I mean, so there are options around the world, you know, and there's definitely English speaking options. That's one of them. If anyone wants to be in Bishkek, which, which is a fun place to be. Yeah, and a great little... <laughs> yeah. He absolutely loved it. Um, but you know what? There may be a pattern here. He tends to love a lot of things that he does in the moment. So just to be aware. Um, okay. I'm interested in options for homeschoolers in Ireland. Okay. Hmm. And uh, a friend did research years ago and found Trinity was less am- hmm. amenable to homeschoolers than St. Andrews in Scotland, where her son ended up going. I'm curious if that has changed. Thanks. I mean, St. Andrews is just so friendly to Americans that I think they're more used to weird American traditions like homeschooling. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know a ton about Trinity, um, but I do think that they're just not as friendly to homeschoolers as, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean that a homeschooler can't get in. No, I mean, it, and again, I think, you know, for a lot of these schools, they're, they're really it, like the way around that, if that's a top priority is again, to use one of these like online cover schools somewhere like NARS, which is, what does it stand for? North American regional high school or something like that. Um, or Clon Laura, um, or mm-hmm. like, a, you know, choose a different online program at the state charter school, whatever, you know, um, and get, you know, get your kid to take some AP course and, yeah. you know, and then boom, you, you know, so again, there are ways around this. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Last question that we had beforehand, and then I'll start looking at questions um, was about med school. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly. Don't, I, yeah. I remember. Don't do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
don't, can you go out of the country to get your undergrad degree and then come back for med school, right? Wasn't that it? it was, yeah. Perfectly, but that's not, I mean, it, med school is so hard to, to get into at all. And you just don't want to be at any disadvantage for it. And, um, and so like this has come up in our group a few times about um, community college, like should your kid transfer and then finish the degree and then apply to med school? And I'm like, no, <laughs> because again, you're at a disadvantage. Like you don't want to do anything that puts you at a, for other things. Like, could you do that and then go get an MBA or something? Of course. Yep, absolutely. Um, but med school is just so specific and you need these specific recommendations and all these things play into it. And geography is a big part of what's playing into it. And just yeah. don't, you know, I mean, if you have options, like I just don't want to do that. You study abroad. Yeah, you study abroad. Um, okay, so you got that. Great. You answered that. Thank you. Um, someone asked other universities I like in the UK. Um, my partner graduated from Durham University. That's a really great one. Um, so I don't think a ton of people in the U S are drawn to that one. So check that one out. Um, it's one of the top ones. Uh, I loved when I was in Cardiff in Wales, the university of Wales, absolutely loved it. So, I mean, but again, it's also depends on the program and what are the yeah, I was going to say, there are some that are really great for arts and others that are, yeah. Just, just, yeah. 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 I'm basically looking at campuses and picturing myself there more than the programs when I design my favorites. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, I'd retire here. I think some of these universities should be places you can retire. Okay, back to questions. Um, oh yeah, someone said Oxford takes five international students for their med school. The problem is coming back to the US is a hard path. Um, any schools you did not like? Oh, any universities I did not like? Yes, Newcastle. Um, I did not like Newcastle. And I think I called you when I was in, it may have been the city more than the university. I think I had a bit of a um, <laughs> situation. I had a bit of a crisis. There. I sort of remember that. I had, an, I, I had an existential crisis walking down the high street in Newcastle. That is what happened. I can tell someone that story anytime, but not right now. So that was not one of my favorites. Definitely not. Um, okay. Is there some kind of database of these English speaking or American schools abroad? You know, um, do you know of a database? No. Um, there's, there's a couple of places that charge you money for it, which I think is absurd because um, it's information that's out there pretty freely. Um, there are some different lists if you search um, in, you know, I mean, it, target where you want to be first and then start looking because then it's a little bit easier. Um, I often uh, put this post, yeah, go ahead. Are you done? Sorry. I mean, I was just going to say also that, um, you know, another way, another way to look for them is see where students are studying abroad. And from yeah. different schools, it's often yeah. the way to do to, the way to find it. Yeah. Oh wow! I just put a, I just put um, a comment in our discussion thread for this, um, and it's to that post I often post in our group, like once a year, that has the links to all the different European schools uh, and the yeah. requirements. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I put that there. I can share it again. Um, what do schools look at when it comes to sports? If your child isn't playing on school teams because of homeschool, my child plays competitive and we consider doing public charter. So she has the athletic experience, but don't know if it's necessary. It's not necessary for sports in the U S no. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think we know any, I don't know anything about sports recruitment abroad. I don't think it's as big. Like, I don't think that's a thing. It's, it's not, I mean, definitely some schools in the UK, you know, like University of Bath is really big as a sports school. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know about recruitment and everything like that. I, I just don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, in the US, though, you know, it's it's really just about the sport. You, I mean a lot of recruitment for some sports doesn't even happen in schools. It depends on the sport. It I mean, it just depends. 
someone asked about the acceptance rate for Americans at Oxford and that I think it's like, um, I mean, it's hard to say, but like 5% or something or 5% of their total students were accepted 5.9 or something like that. It's low. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's harder than, I mean, it's like hard. It's really difficult and nobody's applying yeah, who so isn't hard. already pretty qualified. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. it, it isn't like with, um, you know, because some of these name brand schools in the U S like these Ivy league schools, some people just are sort of like, well, I just want to take my shot and they just apply. It doesn't happen so much mm -hmm. with Americans applying to Oxford. Um, <laughs> So yeah. it's, you know, you're, you're looking at a pool of students who are already pretty qualified. Um, someone asked, this is, okay, my dear daughter found a path for astrophysics undergrad through PhD in the U.S. So that's clear for us, the path. Do you see how school abroad may be a gem for us to see specifically in physics? We are PSA, will have dual enrollment courses only. Perhaps how is UK astrophysics path looks like if it is even worth it for us to look into, how is it affecting when the dream job is in the U S too? Um, those, those academia jobs are just so difficult. I mean, I, but yeah. I, I don't think that you have mine. I mean, you know, if, if you're going into pure sciences and so forth, I don't think that there's any disadvantage. No. Um, no, it's it's not like something like med school or business or something like where you're looking at the connections and the um, yeah, it's yeah, pure sciences. I mean, you can you can go abroad. I mean, it just and there's some really wonderful schools in the UK and other places for physics or astrophysics physics and, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, they may be difficult to get into, so they're going to be competitive. Um, okay. If a student is looking at schools in non-English speaking countries, do they need fluency in the local language? If the program is in English, you often don't need to show fluency in the local language, but you know, it helps to have some. You know, some, some schools though, they'll have just some programs in English and they do expect you to get, you know, to work on, you know, yeah. The, the it's one of the advantages of going to a school somewhere else is to pick up mm -hmm. on the language. My my nephew who went who's at this business school in Austria knew some German because he grew up for a, a little bit in Switzerland in Zurich and then took German in as his, in its associates. This program is all in German, and he tested okay and thought it was going to be okay, but it was a huge shock to be in classes all the time in German, had to get a tutor. But now, I mean, it's amazing how quickly you can pick it up when you need to. For some of these schools, um, you know, if you are going in, in, in fact, most of them, if you are going in another language, you know, they have, you know, like the, um, the DELF exam for French and the, what is yeah. the one for German that be where you get the A and the B and the all the rankings yeah, and stuff yeah. like they have these yeah, rankings yeah. most languages have them like you know even mm -hmm. I mean we're sort of maybe I'm a little bit more from a French and German because you know American students sometimes get those too um but you know like they have them for you know Swedish and you know Danish and <laughs> um you know Spanish and like all these languages they have they have programs to to an exams. Um, and you often have to show fluency, just like foreign students have to take the TOEFL or like there's like a Duolingo version, like in order to, to come to American schools. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, someone asked about art schools in Europe, UK, and Australia. Mm -hmm. I think there's some excellent art schools in all over the world. Um, this friend's child is in Indonesia, so they're, I don't know. You can look at them. I think definitely art schools are unique as far as admissions all over the world, even in the UK. And that's one case where the portfolio is really stressed. Mm, wow. My internet, it just got to notice his internet is unstable. But it was me. <laughs> it's me this time. I got to Sitting here like, I got the was frozen. Um, can students retake the exams? The last question, because I literally have to go eat dinner.
it's six o'clock here. Can, Can students, students retake, retake like AP? APs? I think they're saying APs. I mean, the next year? Yeah, as far as I know, there's no, yeah, they can. Yeah, take them your junior year. And then if you didn't get the score you want, retake them senior year. I mean, that's just so rare though, because so much of it is tied to the class. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Unless you were, unless you were applying specifically for European schools that needed like, you know, or UK schools that need these specific scores, like there is zero, re like I would not encourage anyone to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because for um, American schools, okay. the class matters a lot. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. I think, you so know. clear the you, questions? I think so, maybe. I wanted to say something, you know, there's some other schools that you can apply to, like in Europe, if your student just wants to get into Europe, like Bard College Berlin. It's a great mm -hmm. liberal arts program right in Berlin. Mm -hmm. That's one to look at. The American University in Paris. It's in a great, I mean, I was just there this summer. Yeah. looking at it in a great, great little neighborhood with these awesome buildings and a view of the Eiffel Tower, you know, right from the campus, which again, these are very small buildings housing. that separate that You're are campuses. You're going to have to find housing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. American University in Rome. I mean, there's there's these other yeah. universities that are also The Ang Anglo-American and Pair and Prague. Yeah. That's another one that's yeah. pretty I've inexpensive been, too. I've been there. Yeah, it's just like a building though, right? It's like right, you, you walk in this courtyard. It's a couple buildings around the courtyard, but it's shared with something else too. I mean, again, it's just like random buildings, in the middle, but in a great area. That is also in a great area. I love that school. My son, again, my youngest son loved that school. <laughs> he saw it. I mean, again, I mean, those are all, most of the, all those schools that we've just mentioned, they have very limited numbers of majors and degrees. Yeah, And so, you know, and, and they're not, they're not necessarily offering the level of coursework that you're going to get at a bigger school. So yeah. these are just things to yeah. consider. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely think about that. Okay. Um, any last thoughts you would like to share? Well, we said it at the beginning, but I would just say plan ahead. Like if this is your goal, you really have to think ahead, decide that it's your goal and you know, yeah. and, and do the things that you need to do. Um, and think about if a path, if you're closing another path, um, you know, by, by focusing so heavily on say getting certain test scores and, you know, using an outside cover school or a, a, a charter or something, have you sacrificed your educational goals? You know, what can, you know, just sort of think about all of those questions. I think it's really complex. And it it really is different for each country and location. Like you really do need to to research what exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep checking in because sometimes those requirements change. Mm -hmm. um, and check in the costs. Also, big takeaway: if your family is lower income, there's other ways to get these experiences. So keep that in mind. Um, that are just as good, I would say. You know, for what you can do. Um, I again, I'm Jill. Spera, we run Simplify. We help homeschoolers and other students with admissions, and we definitely mm -hmm. can help with international admissions. If anyone's interested, reach out to us. We do free 20-minute meetings for families to get to know us, and we get to know you.